Welcome to part one of eight parts video series on the introduction to calcium nutrition of apples. Calcium nutrition is very important for improving the eating quality of the apples, the cold storage ability of the fruit, the color and skin qualities, and disease resistance. Calcium plays many important roles in plants. For this presentation, I'm going to focus on the first bullet point. Calcium is needed for continuous cell division and formation, and therefore is a major component of cell walls which gives the structural integrity of the fruit. It's also important for pollen tube formation, which enables fruit set. Calcium, in form of calcium pectate, acts like a glue that binds cells together. Here, in the electron microscopy, showing cells being bound together by calcium. And in case of calcium deficiency, the bonding of these cells can be weakened. Calcium deficiency disorders can come in many different forms. The most common one that apple growers will encounter is the bitter pit. But it can also cause softness in the fruit cause internal breakdown and water core breakdown. Here's Apple High Resolution Cell Structure Scan, made by Dr. Lee Kalsitz from WSU in Wenatchee, Washington. Taking a look at the cross section of the apple right here, you can see the air pockets between the cells, a big air void right here, that is caused by calcium deficiency because the cells are not binding together very strongly. And this manifests into bitter pit on the surface of apple fruit. Here's a calcium concentration study in bell pepper. As many of you who grow bell pepper may know, this blossom end rot, very similar to the one found on tomatoes. At the tip of the peppers, Calcium concentration is very low, or about 75% lower than the tip of the healthy fruit. Here in apples, the bitter pit disorder tends to happen on the lower half of the fruit as well, where calcium deficiency occurs. There are some attributes that make apples more susceptible to bitter pit. One is the fruit growing on vigorous, leafy, upright branches, where competition for calcium occurs between the fruit and the leaves, especially when it's hot out. Also, young trees that just come into production that are still vigorous, fruit that are harvested when still immature, where the calcium in the fruit hasn't become fixed or part of the structure. By annual bearing trees, where one year it might have almost no fruit, the next year it has tons of fruit, can have bitter pit problems. Vigorous rootstock and or soil type. And lastly, the variety that are susceptible are honey crisp and golden delicious. There are some practices that can increase the susceptibility of bitter pit in apples. First and foremost, unbalanced soil fertility program, where you may, may have excessive nitrogen and potassium in the soil, or the availability of your calcium in the soil is low, making the problem worse. You have incorrect canopy management, incorrect crop load management, lack of heat stress management or transpiration control, and excessive watering. It is important to understand how an apple tree distributes nutrients within the plant. Here is a nutrient distribution chart for apples created by Yara. Where nitrogen is seen here, that a lot of the nitrogen went into growing the tree the roots, the woods, the leaves, and a smaller percentage actually went into the fruit. 
when we look at the calcium, you can see that the vast majority of calcium went into growing the tree and a tiny little percentage actually went into the fruit, which makes calcium a challenging nutrient to get into the fruit. And when we look at this distribution here, it's affected by the variety, the rootstock, the soil type, and crop management, environmental conditions, as well as fertilizer. Now, let's look at the nutrient that gets removed from the soil. Based on this example of golden delicious apple that yield 80 bins per acre or about 35 tons. When you send food samples to the lab and it tells you you have 25 milligram per 100 gram of fresh weight of nitrogen in the fruit, then you can make simple math and determine that that's about 17 pounds of nitrogen per acre that's in the fruit. Another calculation will tell you it requires about 45 pounds of nitrogen to grow that crop. Now, you go down to calcium. You can see that it requires about 3.8 pounds in the fruit or about 35 pounds to grow the entire crop. These numbers here helps you determine how much fertilizer you need to apply to the crop every year. But you don't want to use the number that are on here. You always want to consult your agronomist because he will look at the soil test results, he will know your soil type, he will know many other factors that helps him or her make a recommendation of fertilizer to apply. Excessive nitrogen application can impact calcium uptake into the fruit. In this chart here, you can see the higher the nitrogen rate, the lower the calcium is in the fruit. Typically, when you apply higher nitrogen rate, you get larger fruit. And as you know, calcium is a challenging nutrient to get into the fruit. So as the fruit gets bigger, your calcium uptake might not keep up with the size of the fruit. The excessive use of nitrogen not only can reduce the calcium concentration in the fruit, but it can also negatively impact the red color development in apples. Many studies have been conducted that found the negative correlation between the nitrogen use rate and the red color in the fruit. In this example here, we have Honeycrisp in the picture, where you can see that it doesn't have very much red color, which is not very desirable for consumers. There are other nutrients that can impact fruit quality. For example, potassium. Too much potassium can be a bad thing. For example here, you have apples with bitter pit. Lower calcium concentration, typically lower than 5 mg per 100 gram fresh weight, and higher concentration of potassium can cause your potassium to calcium ratio to be high, resulting in bitter pit problems. Now, if you have high calcium and low potassium, then your potassium to calcium ratio would be lower, and you will tend to have better quality apples. Here's another set of data that shows the impact of high potassium to calcium ratio on bitter pit. Here we have potassium to calcium ratio of 42, which is very high. It correlates to higher percentage of apples with bitter pit. While you have lower potassium to calcium ratio, you have virtually no bitter pit. Here's another study that looked at calcium and potassium impact on bitter pit. This is a multiple year study. You can see that on the second year, there was low level of bitter pit. And they found that the calcium concentration in the fruit was above the threshold of five milligram per 100 gram fresh weight. Potassium concentration was low, producing a desirable ratio of about 26, which is below 30. This is the same study as the previous slide, but the researcher were looking at the impact of nutrients on the internal breakdown of apple fruit that were in cold storage for some times. Again, 
they found that on the second year of the study, they had very low percentage of internal breakdown and storage. And in addition to calcium and potassium ratios, they looked at the ratio of nitrogen and calcium. And this, for this particular apples, they determined that the ideal range of nitrogen in milligram per 100 gram of fresh weight is between 40 to 50 milligram. And the ratio of nitrogen to calcium has to be below 8 for the fruit to store well and have less of this type of disorder showing up. Similar relationship was found with the water core breakdown in apples, where higher potassium to calcium ratio, higher magnesium to calcium ratio, and low phosphorus level will lead to this type of storage disorder in apples. So far, I've shown you the impact of the ratios between different nutrients to calcium. And here's a good chart that shows it all. It's called the Moldus interaction chart. And basically, you can see the red line is where antagonism occurs. And it seems like there's nothing in this chart that suggests synergism with calcium. It seems like nutrient like potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, boron, and manganese, if there's too much of it, it will be antagonistic to the calcium uptake into the fruit. At Yara, we have many, many years of data from research trials. And we have determined some parameters for apple nutrients. These are nutrients that can be measured in the fruit as the milligram per 100 gram fresh weight. And these are fairly general numbers. And it's not specific to any variety of apples. But you can see here, at least for calcium, that they recommend the calcium concentration in the fruit to be above 5 milligram per 100 gram of fresh weight. And more importantly, you look at the ratios of nutrients. They recommend that the nitrogen to calcium ratios between has to be, you know, either between 5 to 10, but the lower the ratio, the better. Same for potassium to calcium ratio. Ratios of between 20 to 25 is good, but the lower is the better. Thank you for watching this part one of this eight parts video series. Please stay tuned for part two of this presentation coming up soon. Thank you for watching.